Well, thanks for viewing again today. I know we're a day late. Uh, I got in yesterday uh, from speaking at a conference and enjoyed it very much, but it's good to be home. And uh, just wanted to share a quick thought with you today um, from Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. Remember back in the Old Testament when um, Samuel was told to go to Jesse's house and there God would reveal to him who the next king of Israel was going to be. And Jesse brings out his sons and parades them in front of Samuel and um, none of them seemed to fit the bill. And uh, was it the oldest, the tallest, probably not even the best looking of the sons of Jesse, though David may disagree with that, I don't know. Uh, but we know that he was the youngest and um, they all come by and God says, no, it's not any of them. And Samuel says to Jesse, do you have any other sons? Well, yeah, there's David, the shepherd, um, but why would you want to see him basically? So they send for David and Samuel says, this is the one. And God reminds Samuel that um, men look on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. And here in Galatians chapter 2, verse 16, kind of deals with that very thought. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again these things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I, through the law, am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. You understand that the life we live right now is not our own. But there are many that would justify themselves through religion, through works. But God says, I'm looking for your faith in Christ Jesus. I'm looking at your heart. Um, we can look at people and say, man, they are the greatest Christian I've ever known. And then turned out to be somebody who is wicked and vile and transgress the laws of God. And God says, I'm looking for the heart somebody who will just love me and serve me and follow me. Um, and so I want to encourage you this week to remember that um, though we do things because we love God and want to be his minister, we do it because we have faith in Jesus Christ. If God doesn't have our heart, what good are we? We're nothing more than the Pharisees. The Pharisees looked good. They sounded good. They prayed good, if you will. Um, but man, they were full of wickedness. They were prideful and the enemies of Jesus Christ. So today, I just want to encourage you to remember that God wants your heart. He wants you to live by faith. It was faith that saved us. It is faith that sustains us. And it's faith that gives glory to God. The life I now live is not my own. It is bought with a price. And so I'm going to glorify God with my body and my soul. So just a quick reminder today, and I hope it will be an encouragement to you as you finish your week out. Uh, just a couple of prayer requests. First, remember Irene, who um, fell this last Sunday and um, I think broke the femur up by the hip. And she is in rehab now. Uh, in a rehab facility and uh, they had to replace the hip there and um, uh, she is uh, from what we have heard doing well also Chris Luderman who lives across the street here um, had a kidney stone this week um, <clears throat> could not pass it so they blasted it 
and um, he has not been doing well since. Um, he got home today and had to turn around and go right back to the hospital again. Um, there's been some problems with his kidneys and they're not sure all that's going on. So just want to encourage you to pray for the Luderman family, especially Chris right now, um, and uh, what's going on with him. Um, Elaine Shepard still um, continuing into her rehab from her uh, hip replacement and things like that as well. Uh, Mike Saul and his shoulder and uh, others that of course can't be here. Uh, I don't know anyone in our church this week, praise the Lord, that has COVID. I'm not saying nobody does, but we don't know of them. So um, we praise the Lord for that as well. So let's have a word of prayer and uh, prayerfully we will see you on Sunday. Father, we are so grateful for the love you bestow upon us that we are no longer bound by the law to follow a set of rules to show us what we are the schoolmaster that you placed over the children of Israel, but we are saved by your grace, putting faith in your grace. And I thank you for that. Pray, I pray that we would remember that you want our hearts, that we are bought with a price, and that for us to live sacrificially, to make our bodies a living sacrifice, to be holy is acceptable to, to you and that is just our reasonable service. So I pray today that you would um, encourage those that need encouragement. May they put their faith in you. May we do because we love you, not out of a sense of duty or this is something we have to do because others are watching. That's pharisaical. Lord, I pray that you would be with the request today. Be with Irene, Lord. We thank you for her. She was faithfully serving you when she fell, and I pray that you would give her healing. Thank you for her spirit and her attitude, her encouragement. May we have more that would step in and help fill those voids. Lord, I pray that you would be with Chris right now, Touch his kidney, Lord, and I pray whatever is going on there. Uh, we know the kidneys were not functioning properly. Um, he has been very sick, and I pray that you give him healing as well. Lord, I pray that um, you give the doctors wisdom in that situation. Be with Elaine. Keep her encouraged in you and Mike as he's recovering from his surgery as well. Lord, I pray that you keep us COVID-free and... Um, as we look forward to events that are coming up at our church, I pray that they would be um, an encouragement to our church family and maybe some outside of our church as well. Grow us, increase us to be more like you. In Jesus' name I ask these things, amen. Hey, remember February 12th, we're having our annual heart banquet. Uh, we'll be having it down in the gym so we can spread out a little bit more. Um, We'll try to, uh, instead of having eight at a table, have six at a table, have more tables and have them spread out. Um, looking forward to uh, that event. We'll have the pie auction as well. If you can donate a uh, homemade pie, that would be fantastic. Um, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll raise some money for our teenagers as well. Uh, also March 26th, we have the Sweet, uh, the Sweet Life Dessert Comedy event uh, with Scott Davis. Uh, national known comedian, and uh, he will be um, uh, having that comedy night with us and then presenting the gospel. Wonderful opportunity for outreach, be in prayer for that, be inviting people to that. The cost is just $10 a person or $15 at the door, and uh, the cost of the um, heart banquet is also just 10 bucks. So if you would uh, like to come to either one of those, if you can't afford it, please don't just, I'm not going to go. Um, just let us know you need a ticket and we would be happy to make sure you get those tickets as well. So invite people and uh, prayerfully these will be an encouragement to our church family. I hope to see you here on Sunday. If you can't be here on, somebody, on Sunday, visit us uh, on live stream if you would uh, and we will see you soon.